We're rolling. Everybody's rolling. Hello, everybody. My name is Evita. This is Michael. And this is a very quick video about five tips that I normally give to followers, whether it's in a private lesson or in class. It always seems to be possibly one of these five things. So here we go. Tip number one is complete your weight shifts specifically the very end or the last triple step that you do, we oftentimes find that the follows are kind of like in between their feet and they don't completely shift all the way onto the left leg. So we'll see that in anything, anything we do, anything. So that to do, so this triple step, finish the weight completely right here. I am all the way on my left foot and I totally finish that step. I don't have any moments of being on both feet or worse, I don't have any moments where I go triple touch because then I'm really in a sticky position because then I have to deal with being on my right foot and I usually use my right foot to start things. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is take very generous, calm and complete rock steps. What I find sometimes with followers is Maybe they're anxious or they're worried about being late to something. Their rock steps can become quick or short, like this. Or they take shallow steps, like they don't fully go into that right foot. And I want this to be a very, an mm-hmm moment. Because as I do any rock step with Michael, mm-hmm, me taking my time, Mm-hmm. Gives Michael the opportunity to lead me into a really good idea. Mm-hmm. And you can see how I wait. I am not taking quick, quick rock steps or short, shallow rock steps. That gets you into trouble. Oftentimes, the leaders will also be trying to lead you to do something on count two. So the longer that the follower can wait to collect information, the more successful the move will be. So that was tip number two. Enjoy and take time on your rock steps. Tip number three is pace out your turns. Very rarely in the dance socially do we have a complete rotation on just one beat. Most of our turns, you can think of them in halves. For example, a tuck turn, I'm gonna think of a tuck turn as half this way, half that way. Even a double tuck turn, I'm gonna pace myself out and think of it in halves. So there's half, half, triple step. What about a swing out with an outside turn? I'm also gonna think, even in this moment, half, half, triple step. It's much easier for the leaders to speed us up if they need to, or if we get excited, we can speed up. But generally, as a tip or a recommendation, if the follow can pace their rotations or their turns, then you're gonna be better set uh, for most moves. So that was tip number four. No, three. Tip number four is keep your feet underneath you. Pretend like you have a shadow, except it's right above you, and you have to stay dancing within your shadow. Or you can even pretend like you're in a cylinder like your personal cylinder space, your feet have to stay within that rounded shape. Sometimes I see follows because they think they know what the move is gonna be, they project their feet beyond where the lead is or beyond even their body, and they think that they know where they're gonna go, and that can sabotage the connection or it can make it much more difficult for the follower to do variations or to understand what the lead is. So, if Michael just moves me around, we can do any kind of dancing he wants, I'm gonna keep my feet underneath me, like within my shadow or within this imaginary cylinder. I don't try to put my feet somewhere where I think I should go. It's much more successful to the partnership if you just keep your feet underneath you and then they'll be there for you wherever you go. It's true. And then my final tip number five for followers is see if your face, your head, your focus can follow your follow arm. 
For example, in a swing out, of course I would be looking in the direction of my right arm and my follow arm. If I have a tuck turn, it's really helpful to stay looking at my follow arm. Something that can get you into big trouble is if your face or your head or your focus disconnects too far, you put your right shoulder in a really dangerous or vulnerable position. Um, and it kind of stretches or overdoes all of this. If you simply keep your focus and your eyes generally following your follow arm, then you're gonna have a pretty solid and secure frame. Another cool example of this is an inside turn. Thanks, Michael. Right here, what I really like about that demonstration is that I'm still following my hand, but at the end, because this has found a home stop, I let my body unwind from it while I'm still looking at Michael, and this creates a super cool illusion of slowness. It helps me to pace out my body, and it helps me to find calm when I'm social dancing. So those five tips would be things that I would ask my followers to check and see, is there any one of them that you could work on and see how it improves your dancing? Last time, tip number one was, <laughs> um, I know it, it was, um, tip number one is complete your weight shifts at the end of every move, pretty much all the time, but especially at the ends of moves, finish your weight shifts, finish your weight shifts. Tip number two was take deep, relaxed, and uh, full rock steps. You can think to yourself, always going, mm-hmm. And that's going to give you time to feel, mm -hmm. you're going to feel whatever the lead might be. Tip number three is pace yourselves in your rotation. Think of each turn as really only half a turn unless it's sped up. Tip number four, keep your feet underneath you in your little shallow shadow cylinder sphere and you will always be safe and able to move wherever you want to go. Also footwork variations will be easier for you. And the final tip number five, Pretty much follow your follow hand. It will protect your right shoulder and it will help you to feel calm and focused during the social dance. Thank you for your help, Michael. Thank you, Vita.